here we've got ourselves a 2013 Chevy Equinox. Turn the key on, go to crank. We have no crank situation. But with the key in the run position, let's see what we have here. I'm looking for a couple things. First of all, we got a message about the hood being open. I don't have a check engine light. Now, I don't think this vehicle has an actual printer that shows up on the driver information center. We do have a power uh, steering service message. And uh, I can move the shifter through the gears. That's cool. So that's all right. So we don't have a check engine light. That's going to be one of my main things to think about here. I'm going to start off with a pre-scan if I can. And I'll share that with you. Well, we've been, the technician have been uh, looking around, seeing if they could figure something out here before. Didn't really find much. But uh, there's our engine control module that we're assuming is not going to communicate. That's what they said wasn't communicating. But we're going to get started here with our pre-scan. All right, we're going to go ahead and put our VIN in here and see if this will populate. We're going to take a look and see what networks are talking here and which ones aren't. So. Yeah. Okay. So the body control is on uh, DLC pins 6 and 14. So this is the high-speed network here, the DLC pins 6 and 14. That's your high-speed CAN. So we're just going to go through here and see what talks and what doesn't. We can sort this by the DLC pin. So you can see that these are all communicating, so that's cool. Basically, it looks like the engine control module. What about the power steering module? That's talking too. And looking at, if you look at a diagram here, I think uh, we go through the brake control module, then to yeah. the power steering module, and then to the engine control module. So that ECM is not communicating. Yeah. So the next thing I can do is take a look at the resistance of the CAN bus. Okay, the next step I'm going to do is go ahead and turn the key off to try to get this network to go to sleep. And I'm going to pull a uh, DLC pin for our scan tool. And we're going to go ahead and plug in our DLC breakout box. This is going to be an attempt to uh, get a look at the CAN bus resistance. So you can see 6 and 14 are still active. we got to wait for those to go down. Um, in the meantime, while we're waiting to do that, I'm going to go ahead and check my uh, multimeter here. Actually, I can't do that. So I was going to try and... Uh, Plug that into there to check that. So you can see the CAN bus went to sleep. So I'm going to go between 6 and 14, and I am expecting 60 ohms. And we have 60 ohms there. So that means that pretty much my network's intact up to the up to the uh, PCM and back to whatever model's on the back of this car. So we're in good shape there. So the next step is uh, we're going to check our powers and grounds at our PCM. So I'm going to take a look at the OE diagrams, and I want to see powertrain management. And just so you know, as that was loading up, I went ahead and popped the caps off of the uh, connector clips. So these won't lock down now, but we can access the harness and take a look at what's going on there. So we're looking for this first diagram. Awesome. We're looking for the module, powers, and grounds. This is good stuff. So we can see we've got a couple different things. Uh, we've got our data communication uh, schematic, which if I... Sometimes you open a new link. I got to click on it and it'll go there. There is a serial enable here. Check that out. Uh, that goes to the engine control module right here. So we got to make sure that we have uh, this serial enabled to the engine control. If we go back here, whoops, wrong button, back twice. We want to check for battery positive here. We want to make sure we have battery positive at this pin until the PCM grounds this uh, primary side of the relay to turn it on. And then we should have power down here. And uh, that's the control for the check engine light and two grounds. I did go ahead and do a little trick I like to do, guys. Uh, with a key on, we can check the case of the computer to the ground. And I'm going to go ahead and turn that on real quick. Turn that to the run position. We're in run. And I'm always looking for very low voltage on the case of the computer. And when I hold that there tight, you can see we're at 4.95 millivolts. So about, about 5 millivolts, that's, that's a good ground. Now we're going to go ahead and check this big power here. That's going to be a big power, and then we've got two grounds to check as well here and here. So we're going to take a look at 51 and 52. These two have to be on 
Uh, we have to have battery positive here at 52, which is a red and white, and 51 has to have this ignition main relay come in. And this engine control relay will not turn on for this Terminal 73 if we don't have these. So Terminal 73, let me just take a look here. Terminal 73 is only at 107 millivolts. This is the large pink and black. That is Terminal 73 there. So we don't have what we need there. So we got to check 51 and 52. So that's red and white and pink. So red and white and pink are right next to each other right here. And I don't know if I this probe is actually going to get in there and check this. These terminals are too small for the probe that I have. i got to find another probe. Okay, so we've got 13.5 volts on our pink one. That is going to be number 51 over here. And that's good. But let's take a look at the next one over. We're going to get into this, uh, this red and white. This one should have also have some voltage, good, good voltage there, with a key in the run position like we got it. See if I can't get this thing in here. And what we got here? 2.5 volts. We only have 2.5 volts on the red and white. That red and white wire, take a look at the diagram, comes from the fuse block. It should be coming from on the, let's see here. So 52, red and white, should be coming from fuse 10 uh, on the underhood fuse block. So let's take a look at that. I got to go ahead and move my maintainer here. Get this thing off. Go ahead and put that over there for a second. So it's really hard to see, but fuse 20 is right here. And uh, we're going to go up on the other side here. This is it right here, fuse 20. So I'm probing there. Oops. We got 12.5, 12.15. Check on the other side. 12.14, we can always pull the fuse and take a look too. I don't suspect it, but every once in a while you'll have a leg that broke off. That's a, that's a pretty odd situation there, but let's just double check. And I have uh, both sides of my leg of that fuse, so that's cool. So basically what we have is an open circuit in between this fuse here and this wire here. It comes out of the fuse block on the bottom. It's a straight shot, no connectors. Um, we, so we got to get in there and start looking around at this harness pretty good. All right, so we're going to go ahead and use a, a fuse jumper. This is only 5 amps, and we're monitoring that 2.5 volts on, on that circuit that we should have power. And if we go ahead and hit this, you're probably going to hear all the clickety-clack as this thing comes to life. Oh. Yeah, so you hear that, the click-clack. So we have an open circuit between this point of this red wire and this fuse right here. So that's what we gotta go investigate. It looks like the harness runs this way um, and it goes up. So this thing, if I had my scan tool on there, it would probably communicate right now. Yeah, All right, everybody, so I was out of time with this one. I did spend some time popping up the fuse block. We looked underneath the fuse block, made sure we had continuity. I don't like using that word, but, but once you undo the fuse block, you don't really have uh, power going through it anymore. So we did have continuity between the fuse and also the terminal that goes uh, to the connector that feeds that red and white wire to the PCM. So we knew we had an open circuit between the PCM and that that fuse, right? It's in the harness somewhere. My customer did find it. I didn't locate this. This is his pictures. So it was actually a broken wire. It doesn't appear that it was actually green and corroded. It looks like it got flexed or maybe chewed on. I'm not 100% sure. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd like to hear. But once again, Basics are the way we go to find these problems. It's always the basic stuff. My customer is actually a member of the uh, core membership website and they're getting better at doing this type of testing. And I was happy he got this far uh, with his diagnosis. Now he had the connector and view printed up. Many times I go to shops and that aren't fixing the cars. I'm just going to throw this out there. The shops that aren't fixing the cars will have the connector and views printed up and that will have a list of all the different terminals for a connector like of your powertrain control module like he had in a video here. You can see this was already out and I pointed to it. Now that's going to give you a lot of good information. However, 
it doesn't show you how the system works. Almost 95% of the time, I'm going directly to a wiring diagram. I want to see a wiring diagram so I can understand how the system works. And understanding how the system works, now I know what I'm testing. Um, and with some more experience and practice, you will be able to uh, locate the terminals faster. Now, he had that printed out, and that was great. So I was like, okay, this is uh, 51, 52, or whatnot. But that was it. Once again, basics, guys. It's so... Uh, basic, right? 95% of the problems that I fix in a field that seem like they're complex are really simple and easy to fix if you understand basic electricity. We do have the Core and Premium membership site that both offer essential electricity for automotive technicians. I can't stress it enough. If you want to be a better tech or if you're a DIYer and you want to be better at fixing cars for your neighbors, friends, whatever, check out this course. It will help you out. It's 10 bucks a month for access to it. You can cancel any time. But anyhow, besides the point, I hope everybody's doing good. It's been really cold in Cleveland. It, it, this was on the 21st I did this job, I believe. Yep, that was the 21st. On a, and it's been cold. It's been negative negative uh, degrees Fahrenheit, you know, negative 10 and whatnot lately. So I've been freezing. I hope everybody's having a happy new year. You guys take it easy. Like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and make sure you go out there and pay attention to the basics. That's where it's at all the time. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.